Hello, wonderful people. Welcome back to my channel, The Teacher's Best Friend, and this is Mary Lua Renyo. So it's been a while since my last episode, but I know uh, some of you are still watching and reviewing the previous videos, especially um, on professional development and how to apply for a job in the United States. So in today's episode, I'm going to discuss with you the procedure for applying H-1B direct in the United States, okay? So um, there are so many teachers that are coming to the United States on a J-1 visa, that is the cultural exchange teacher program. But um, with the changes on the regulations on J-1, there are some positions that are no longer qualified for J-1. So the option is to use other kind of visa, which is the H-1B. So what are the positions that are no longer qualified at this time to process under the J-1? These are the teachers that are not considered as teacher of records, such as um, the intervention teachers, um, reading specialists, or ESL teacher, or teachers that are teaching multiple grade levels. And usually these are the elective teachers. They are not the teacher of records. The teacher of records that they consider are the, like the elementary teacher who is teaching first grade, second grade, or a math teacher, science, or a special ed teacher. So if you are not on that category, they will not process you on a J-1 visa. Another um, positions in the school that they no longer process for J-1 is the school counselor and um, like the library media specialist as well. So their option is to use an H-1B. So what is the procedure of applying direct as an H-1B or under the H-1B visa? First, of course, uh, you need to look for schools or school districts that are in need of your uh, qualifications, like if you are a library or media specialist, a guidance counselor, or a reading specialist, um, these are the positions that can qualify, qualify for an H-1B. I am not saying that the other teacher positions are not qualified. All the positions for teaching are qualified for H-1B, but J-1 is a faster option. And for those that are not qualified for J-1, they, their option is to go H-1B. If your employer is willing to petition you as a direct hire under the H-1B visa, you need to understand or at least uh, inform your employer that the government, the Philippine government is requiring companies or schools that are hiring direct to go on a process of approval. And the approval comes from the Philippine consulate. Like in the United States, um, there is one in uh, Los Angeles and Washington DC. And they specify what are the states that falls under uh, California, uh, the LA office, and what falls on the Washington um, DC office. So usually some of the states that are covered by um, Philippine consulate in California is like the Arizona, Oregon, like the West side, Colorado, um, Nevada, uh, Texas, and all those states um, near the West side. And the rest in the East, um, they fall under the Washington DC. So once you completed everything and you got petition for H-1B and your visa was approved, the next step of course is for you to, to uh, you think you're going to ready to fly to the United States because you have your visa. But if you visit the Philippine overseas the POEA, Philippine Overseas Employment Administration Office in the Philippines, and you are going to seek your OEC. That's the like the an exit clearance before you travel if you are on a working visa. If you go abroad for any countries, you need an OEC, even if you go to the United States. 
you need the overseas employment certificate as an exit clearance. It means you're ready to go and travel as a, as a worker and H-1B are the working visa. So they don't release your OEC if you are a direct hire. If you don't have a clearance from the Philippine consulate in the United States. Unlike if you pass the agency, you don't need an approval from the consulate because you are hired under a recognized agency in the Philippines. So once you have a visa, you can get your overseas employment certificate right away. You schedule and get it and they will also give you the pre-departure orientation seminar. And then you buy your ticket and you're ready to go. But if you are hired directly by your employer from any other countries in the world and the United States, you need approval from what they call uh, the Office of the Philippine Overseas, it's called POLO, Philippine um, Overseas uh, Labor, something like that. And um, the reason for this is they wanted to protect Philippine workers from abuse of the employers and from not getting the, the equal salary or equal benefits that other nationalities are getting. So the procedure is to get your OEC, you need to uh, advise your employer to secure the clearance from the consulate office in the United States. So in the case of uh, teachers that are hired in the area of, uh, let's say, Arizona or Nevada or Colorado, they need to submit it to the Philippine Consulate uh, Labor Attaché Office in Los Angeles. And what are the requirements that they need in order for you to be cleared from the POEA or the Philippine Overseas Employment Administration. So under the administrative order number 168, you can research on that. They are out outlining the policies and guidelines. So first you have to have your official contract from your employer, your official contract, your job offer, um, your employer must be legitimate. It means they have accreditation, they have official business registration, and you also need to present your labor condition application. That is um, the application they send when the employer petition you for H-1B. And then your employer also do the other forms like certification of uh, the company. They have to provide the company's information or they call it employer information form. Uh, what kind of business it is, where is it located, how many um, employees do they have, uh, do they have insurance and, and all those information. And also, um, your employer should also commit to register you under OWA, okay? So you need to be a member of um, OWA. And you have to show or have to have your copy of your Philippine passport and a copy of your visa stamped by the U.S. Embassy. And um, you also need your personal or the OFW information sheet that you need to submit to the POEA. So once you gather all these documents or the employer gathered all these documents, they need to notarize, especially the employment contract, the valid um, business license, and also the addendum. When you say an addendum, these are the conditions that the Philippine government is asking under the contract. Even your employer issued you a contract, this addendum is also necessary. And in that addendum, they are stating what are the conditions that the or standards that the Philippine 
government is requiring in order to send workers abroad, okay? So um, the employment contract, the contract addendum, the valid business certification or accreditation, and also the company certification. Company certification is like uh, the company is certifying that they will not hire more than five employees directly. They can hire probably as much if they pass through an agency, but if they hire direct, they limit to only five. So those documents, they need to be notarized for whatever state you are applying, and then they will be sent to the state secretary, uh, let's say Arizona Secretary of State. They will be apostilled, notarized and apostilled, and then sent to the Philippine Consulate Office, the Labor Attache Office specifically. And once those documents were approved, that is the only time you can send them to the teacher who is applying direct and uh, show them to the Philippine Overseas Administration in order for them to get the OEC and have the pre-departure orientation. So that is a long process. And if the employer is not um, well-versed with this procedure, it will take a while. So just an advice, uh, you need to make a research if you are applying direct that this is an important requirement in order for you to get the exit clearance. And on the other hand, if you opt to use an agency, a legitimate um, agency in the Philippines or in your home country, that is also good because you don't have to go to the hopes of having um, all this notary and apostille and send them for approval because the agency that um, you're going to use is supposed to be accredited by the POEA and they honor um, those agency if they're accredited and you don't need to, to get all those uh, clearances and approval. And then um, you can already apply for OEC. The only thing that um, there's always a, an, advantage, uh, an advantage or disadvantage when you apply direct or when you pass through an agency. Of course, agencies, they charge money and sometimes we don't know how much. It can be just reasonable amount and sometimes it's uh, a lot or a big amount of money that you need to pay if you will use an agency. But the only thing that you can guarantee there is the smooth process because they will facilitate everything and all you need to do is wait. But if you apply direct, you have to go to the process of uh, gathering all the documents by yourself and helping the employer figure out um, what they need to do in order to get the approval. So those are something that you need to weigh in. Are you going to apply direct for H-1B or are you going to use uh, a recruitment agency in your home country? But um, they are both good and they are both uh, like, it will make you come to your destination, but the process is just different, okay? So remember that if you are applying direct, you need approval from the consulate, Philippine consulate office of the country you are applying for. And they need to issue that clearance for you to get your OEC and do your pre-departure orientation seminar. So that are that's those are the things that you need to remember okay uh, so that you can avoid delay you can plan ahead so uh, if you have questions on um, the procedure and you want more details uh, please don't forget to write me an email at um, the teacher's best friend at gmail.com or write your comment down below okay and also um you also need to remember that if you are on a J-1 or applying for a J-1, usually their cut off is um, October. So you need to apply earlier. So your DS-2019 will be processed in time because 
if you are heading to the United States, classes begin in August and, and some area in September. So if you are already in October, that's kind of their cut off. And beyond that, it, it's difficult for you to come unless you wait for the next school year, okay? And for H1, as long as your employer or the school district is accredited to a higher education, you don't need to pass the, the quota or the cap. Um, there are districts that are accredited to higher education. They are considered as cap exempt. It means visa is always available for them. The H-1B visa is always available for them and they don't need to go on like a draw or, or wait in line, okay? So those are some information that you need to know and you also need to find out uh, with your employer or with your prospective uh, employers, okay? So thank you and um, I hope those teachers that are planning to apply, uh, especially for next school year, 2022-2023, uh, this is the best time for you to look for job opening and prepare your credentials, prepare your um, self to uh, interview, okay? So bye for now, and to God be the glory. Thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something on the information I provided. Thank you.